Retro Gaming Roundup. You drinking a beer while you're doing this? Hello and welcome to another episode of Beeb and Beer. Got my beer, got my beeb. And in this episode, I'm going to be playing Imogen on the BBC Micro. This is a recommendation from, and a very good recommendation, because I actually really enjoy playing this. It is from Pedro Gomez, who recommended me playing this in the Beeb and Beer Castle Quest video a few weeks ago. So if you've got a recommendation for something you'd like me to play on the BBC Micro, just pop it in the comments below. And at some point, hopefully, I'll get around to playing it. Uh, did a little bit of background research, looked for a, a review for it in micro user to see what they thought of it. And it came out, this game, in 1986, but for some reason, micro user didn't get around to reviewing it until June 1987. So I'm assuming it must have been the best part of a year old by then. And also, the uh, person that reviewed it kind of had a dev copy as well. I'm not really sure why they had a dev copy when it, it had already been out for like the best part of a year. But yeah, it was reviewed by someone called Carol Barrow. She gave it a very positive review. The last paragraph, her little final words were, an excellent arcade slash adventure game is a rare thing. They are usually lacking in either the puzzle or the graphics department. Imogen is lacking in neither. The puzzles are clever and the graphics are a delight. I agree with Carol. She's correct. It is a, it's an awesome game. Really enjoy playing this one. It's a good drinking game too. I'll explain why as we delve into it. But yeah, for some reason she gave it three out of five, which she gave it a glowing review written wise, and then the, the actual star rating is three out of five, which is only average according to their rating system. I would have given it five out of five. It is that good. All right. So let's look at Imogen. The storyline, if you're interested is there's a dragon he goes and hassles some town people causes a lot of problems you're a wizard called Imogen Imogen turns himself into to an even more powerful dragon and he defeats the dragon that's causing a lot of problems but then the stress of him turning himself into a dragon becomes too much and then he starts to become problematic and he starts breathing fire on people and raining hell down on these villagers then they call in another wizard who's even more powerful than Imogen, who takes Imogen, puts him into a dungeon and leaves him there. And as he slowly recovers, the idea is that he should be able to then solve the puzzles in all of these various dungeon bits of dungeon and then eventually return. And he should be all right. So basically you're just keeping Imogen is just being kept out of everyone's way until he's clever enough and got all his faculties working again and he can solve all the problems in the dungeon and come out. So let me show you. Superior software. Once again. So, pretty simple. Left, right and jump and then you can press enter to do something so if I test left and right and enter he jumps if I had some items if you look here I'm using the cursor keys for these um, controls up here you've got some options so I can transform into a cat or a monkey using my wizard skills and if you look at the top right there this is a great way of the thing that's quite good about this game is you can't die and you can't really mess up the puzzles but the only thing is that you can run out of magic. So every time I transform into another animal, I use up one of my magic credits. So I start with 150. If I turn into the monkey, see, now I've got 149. But each, yeah, each of these animals has a special skill. The monkey can climb. Obviously, you can't climb there because you can't reach that rope. Uh, the cat can jump further and higher than the, the other two. And the wizard special skill, apart from being able to walk and jump, is that he can actually use items as we collect items. He can actually, he has the dexterity to use them. You've also got the ability to 
see what section you're on you can see that there's uh that's the number of sections there are each one's represented by a letter as i solve the puzzles you can see those kind of getting crossed off you've also got a save system you can turn the music on and off the sound on and off if you want to and you can yeah enter a password the password's quite cool because it actually gives you some kind of indication as to how to solve this is like a tiny bit of a hint in the password there see this one's called apple source and that's a tiny little hint at the puzzle that i've got to work out to get out of this bit of the dungeon so you can see we've got a rabbit up here let's if I want to go up there, I need to turn into the monkey. Because the monkey can climb and the wizard can't. The other thing about this monkey is that he can't turn around on the rope. So whatever way you're facing is the way that you jump off the rope. Oops. See that rabbit stop getting up there. So if, you, if I go that way, I can't jump off to the right. You can only jump off to the left. So that rabbit's knocking me off. So I go up here get past the rabbit and when I say it's a good drinking game and the fact that you can kind of just leave that nothing's going to happen to you your time doesn't go down there's no danger of getting killed so you can just enjoy a beer have a little zip and then just carry on seamlessly so let's see what's up here an apple so let's, I already know how to do this, so I'll just, here we go, smack that for there. They're normally quite, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, intuitive, these puzzles. There's a few of them that are a little bit difficult, but they're not too taxing. They're kind of just the right amount of taxing. It's nothing super stressful. See, I can't get over the apples, the monkey. I need to be the cat to jump over and get onto the other side to be able to push it along the floor. And see that rope that I can climb up before? I couldn't reach it as the monkey. I can't climb up it as the cat who can jump that high. So now if I jump on the apple using the cat, turn into the monkey, I can now climb up here. I have to jump off the rope that way because I can't turn around in midair. Jump back onto the rope, jump off this way. And there's the spell. Okay, right, so then same again. I can't jump on there as the monkey. I can't get the rope, I can't get to the rope as the monkey. So it's back to the cat, you can jump a bit further. Back to the monkey, onto there. And we obviously can't, also we can't turn around on the rope. So we have to jump into this bit of rope. Go over here, go over here. And now we're turned around. We do it all again in reverse. It's amazing. You can. Where are we? There we go. And now I've got the spell to get out of this bit of the dungeon. So transform to the wizard and has the ability to use objects and cast spells. Select the spell. He's got it in his hand. Press return to use it. And he's escaped that bit of the dungeon and he's on to the next bit. And we now look. Out of this bit here you can see hamps this is such a weird puzzle this one it's kind of because of the amount of objects you've got there's not loads of inventory to use so it's kind of it's fairly intuitive what you what you've got to do most of the time and i understood what i had to do but the logic behind this puzzle is pretty odd so hamster jam there you go you can see that i've done where that little diamond is there that's one of the dungeon sections that i've done now I'm right so the first things first i need to climb out of here that rope's too high that's i can't jump on there as him so we turn into the monkey 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 you have to be really careful when you first start playing it i was just chopping and changing animal left right and center and it's only when you're uh getting more to the end you've got like five changes left and one level left to do I've done every single level now, but still not completed it. Oops, see what I mean? That cost me there, another challenge. Up the rope. Oh, 
this so tulip bulbs so we've got a bulb here to grow something and do you know what we grow it in see this hamster this is the weird bit i kind of it's obviously i think it's quite obvious what you've got to do here but then it's the next bit that's kind of is strange when you first do it look So there, I flattened the hamster. The level's called Hamster Jam. Go to the wizard, because he's got the ability to use stuff. I've got the bulb here. Put the bulb in the dead hamster. The dead hamster fertilizes the bulb and it grows into some phallic shaped kind of weird thing. Back to monkey. He climbs up it. And there's the spell. <laughs> Some of these are, oh no, do you know what? I just, just realised what I've got to do on that. I forgot about this. I'd say this is game is kind of about 80% about solving the puzzles and the other 20% is pixel perfect jumps that if you mess up you've got to do another change so I've got to jump just as his front legs are just off the edge of that platform come on no this is one of those things that took me a little while to get used to jumping around as the cat and it didn't used to stress me out until I realized that they're actually quite valuable the changes if you want to complete the entire thing yes look to the wizard get the spell use the spell slowly regaining my faculties Right, back to the cat, because I can't jump high enough as the monkey. And then we turn into the monkey, and, because there's a rope there. It feels like when you first see it, it looks like quite a complicated game, but it's actually really quite easy. I find it quite a relaxing game to play. <laughs> right, what did I do here? Oh, I remember now. Let's just jump off. I should have been on the facing the other way. Right, see, this is uh, another thing I noticed about this game. Some of the things that you pick up and you have in your inventory, it's not obvious what they are until you use them, and it doesn't tell you anywhere what they are, unless I'm missing something. But basically, if I'm now the wizard again, and then I use this, do you know what this is? It's a lighter, or a torch. Look at that. Back to the cat. Oh, why did I do that? Oh, I well, know I can do that. It doesn't matter. I thought I'd wasted a thing there, but I haven't. Because you know what we've got to do now? You can fall as far as you want in this game as well, which is another thing that alleviates some of the stress. <laughs> Have some of that. Look at that. And back to the cat. Back to the monkey. And I think that gap's just too big for the monkey to jump. Oof. Nice. And then it's back to the monkey. So we need to be on those ropes facing the other way. So let's get the cat here. Back to monkey. This bird gets in the way. 
So we need to just get below her a little bit. Yes. Got the magic. Back to the wizard. Use the magic. If anyone can tell me why, I'm not sure if there's some significance to this, but the, why does this top bit change colour? Two things, if you're watching this, if you want to put it in the comments, if you know. Why does this change colour? Another question, why was this reviewed in 1987 when it came out in 1986? Is micro user just slow? Why did Carol have a dev copy? That's another, I've got more than two questions. And another question is, is there any way that once my magic goes down to zero, that I can do something to rectify that? Or is that it? Is it just game over? Let's see. I'll tell you what, we'll do one more of these. <clears throat> I could just play, I could actually keep playing this all day. Let's go right, so with wizard, what's this one about? So look at the clue. Time for, oh, this is a really awkward one. This was probably, I think this is actually one of the most difficult ones that I've I, uh, had to do. So you can cat, jump off here, jump over here, I should say. This is odd. So this is a thing that I found out that when you handle an object, you become slightly heavier. So I become the monkey. I don't have to actually use the egg timer. I just need to hold it as the wizard and it makes me, oops. I'd say this out of all of the dungeon areas, I would say this is the most difficult one. Not just that bit of me jumping on there, which I'm messing up. <clears throat> Lovely. So right, on there, on the wizard, I weigh X amount. I just don't even use the egg timer, just get out the egg timer. I'm slightly heavier, that falls down. So now, if I turn into that, I can now use that to get over here. This is the this is the most difficult one. Because I think you've got basically got to transform in midair. So let me show you what we do here. I've got to turn it, I've got to I basically have to hit that pendulum underneath the clock to get the clock going. The cuckoo starts coming out and then I have to collect the cuckoo but I have to do that as the monkey and the monkey can't jump high enough. So I have to turn into the monkey halfway through jumping towards that rope. It normally takes me loads of tries. So let's do it, shall we? Have the monkey ready. So all I've got to do is hit space to transform. No, I've even messed that up. Right. Just awful. If it kept going, it'd be it'd be easy, but it doesn't. The pendulum stops after a while. This gives me a good opportunity to just have another little sip of my beer. <clears throat> right, let's do this again. I'm going to edit this and just show it sped up so that you have to watch me fan every time. There we go. Done it. Wasted a whole bunch of changes in the process. Cuckoo, my cuckoo clock. There we have a broken cuckoo clock. Use the cuckoo.
Let's see how logical that is. It's logical in the sense that there's the amount of things that you've got to use. You can kind of work out what you have to do. But it is still pretty random. Right, what did I have to do here? Was it just jumping over here? I forget now. Oh, uh, what's this? There we go. Wizard spell. Lovely. There you go. There you have it. Imogen on the BBC Mike. I won't go through all of these, but yeah, there. Where are we now? I probably will. Once I've actually finished recording this, I probably will go on and carry on playing. You can see there, I've done four sections of the dungeon. A lot of it, a lot of Imogen's faculties are coming back now. I'm gonna carry on playing. If you have any recommendations for other games to uh, play on the BBC Micro, pop them in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Retro Gaming Roundup.